Outnumbered over time. OT baby, happy Monday. Judge Napolitano joined us for the hour on TV. He had to scoot. So now there's this lovely space between Ebony and myself. <laughs> a warm, it's, it's like a the safe bench. place. Yes, exactly. It's a it safe is. space. Didn't we have a somebody. giant teddy bear that we once put <laughs> we in that We did. Scene? Where did the teddy bear go? That was like the first couple of weeks <laughs> we were on, right? We need like a, not a flat Stanley, but like a... I a have a flat holder. Stanley at home. I'll bring it. Oh, there you go. We can put that there. Oh, thanks for the how, idea, Andrea. How random is that, <laughs> right? No. Uh, I th are you seeing it on the live chat, all the response <laughs> to the story we did about the kids who were forbidden from singing the national anthem at the 9-11 memorial here? Uh, a lot of people yeah. weighing in on that. Uh, Captain Shadrack says, thank you, Judge. Let them sing. Um, Rules are rules, borders are borders, laws are laws. D. John N. or D. Joe N. D. John. Uh, oh my gosh, that's hard to watch. Mm -hmm. Martia, too. You're saying, mm hmm. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm just thinking, because I was in choir as a kid, right? And we did the field trips. And mm -hmm. normally when you ask a children's choir to come, like that's like the extra feel goods. So I'm just thinking, mm -hmm how you explain to the children, yeah. you did nothing wrong. I this is a bureaucratic issue that has nothing to do with you. Because kids, mm -hmm. I don't think they're gonna understand that. Mm -hmm. If I were that teacher, I would have said, keep on going. There you go. Yeah. What judge <laughs> is really gonna take them on? Yeah. Yeah, in a court point. over that. How much is the fine, I would say, here? <laughs> yeah, we're, about, yeah. we're about 35 bucks and go, here, beat it. The pay yeah. Pay. <laughs> Jay Wolf says, should be allowed to sing the Star Spangled Banner anywhere, anytime in the USA. Uh, Yes. And of course, Tabor, the judge needed to inform Harris that the Baltimore courts left for Indy decades ago. <laughs> oh, hey, look, I did my mea culpa on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> I really did. I took a bow on that one. Um, you know what's really interesting, though? I mean, I, I hear people say untoward things all the time. I don't see guards stepping up and saying, you know, you really shouldn't be cussing here. Well, I was going to say, because just because they have the permit requirement doesn't mean it has to be enforced. But I'm don't you think like a lot that. of these guys, not that they necessarily don't know the rules, mm -hmm. but I just think they like to flex their, their muscles and insert their power. Yeah. Right. Good point. You know, like I was going Fair through point. TSA the other day and it was like, I wasn't doing anything wrong. And the guy's coming up and barking and you have too many items um, of carry let me, on let me and do break this something and do to that. You, Andrea, and do he wanted an excuse to talk to you. That's what that was about. But it wasn't like an overreaction yeah. and it was like, it, it, nice it, yeah. Yeah, and it, was like a, it was hostile. It was aggressive. And I thought, OK, buddy. You just, you know, yeah. just like flex Anything your muscles, feel powerful if it makes you feel better in front of all these people to chastise right. me for my one carry yeah. on item. But it's, it's, a, it's like a waste of energy to try yeah. to combat it. So you just say yes, sir, exactly. and move comply. On. Right. Like it's not worth it. <laughs> Why couldn't they have been offered the opportunity to get the permit post event? Like they could have said, you, you know what, you guys, you can finish singing your song or don't say anything until they're done. Or just say next time. I mean, if yeah. it's that serious, just say, you know, hey, we're going to let you do this, but next time normally we require this. I don't uh, know. I just think it's sad because it was kids. Too. Ryan A123 rules are meant to be broken. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's one safe space I agree with, Victor <laughs> Purcell, <laughs> the safe space. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah. All right. So we are on the heels of yet another, I don't even know, do we call them Super Tuesdays? They're kind of Superette Tuesdays now in the primaries, right? We've got five states. They're to still tomorrow. super. I was just going to say, super? Pennsylvania is super. Well, that's yeah. true. Okay, so yes. Yeah, yeah, but it was super anyway. Didn't have anything to do with the primary, super. right? Um, but what are your thoughts on it? I mean, are, are these, are we kind of seeing it's like the fat lady's going to sing for some of these guys? Yeah, I mean, on both sides of the aisle. I, 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 th I think it's you know squarely in Hillary Clinton's uh, corner, and and same with Donald Trump. I mean, he's been leading in Pennsylvania for weeks. It's clearly Trump country, and when you look at the breakup of a state like Pennsylvania, it's a purple state. Mm -hmm. You know, it has a history of vacillating between Republican and Democratic governors and senators. It's traditionally more fiscally conservative, but more socially liberal. Um, but big, interesting, big pro-life. Um, demographic there, a state where someone like a Rick Santorum uh, can get elected. But then you have these pockets in Philadelphia that are very, very liberal. Yeah. But Trump is doing incredibly well. I believe that he will walk away with the lion's share of those 71 delegates. I still want to know what's being said behind closed doors at the RNC. Like, are they, I mean, obviously they could go two different ways with yeah. this. And they could say, all right, like you're saying, it's already Trump. So let's stop all this mess and let's start to support Trump. Yeah. Or are they looking at the Cruz Kasich thing? Are they part of it? I think mm. they're saying, uh, this is just my speculation here. I think they're saying, come on, fellas, pull it together and give us something. I think that's pretty much what's going on with the RNC. Give us just something to hold on to in terms of denying him just enough delegates so that we can at least have a conversation mm -hmm. around this come convention. Because if they don't give them that, that kind mm -hmm. of meat, then they have nothing come mm -hmm. convention. Mm -hmm. Wow. I just wonder what the GOP is going to look like going forward. 
What are the Democrats <laughs> going to look like moving forward, though, Harris? Well, they're going to be much farther to the yeah. left. I mean, Bernie Sanders yeah. is doing one thing very well. He is changing the conversation Absolutely. within the Democrat Party. Absolutely. I mean, he is getting people to see. I mean, just to hear Charles Koch even bring up the idea of, of money the way that he did in the economy. It was a little Bernie-esque. We were talking about it with the political insiders last night. Right. Um, it, it, the whole conversation has changed about big money and Wall Street. I think Can I so. ask you about the Koch brothers? Yes. Why do liberals hate the Koch brothers so much? Because if they're going <laughs> to love any group of Republicans, right. it would be the Koch family. And I say that because they give millions of dollars to the endowment for the arts. They do. They support all of these liberal causes, Ebony, but the vitriol from the left, it's like, if you're going to like any Republican, why wouldn't it be a Koch brother? He support, they support, both brothers, many of the causes of uh, the left. That's true. I mean, here's what I think. I think this is the problem that many in the Democratic Party have gotten wrong. They demonize success. They demonize money. They mm -hmm. demonize, you know, uh, being a top one percenter. And, and I think that why? when you... I, I, but then I they turn around that. and take the money. They, they, they take it if it's from Clooney. <laughs> They'll take it if it's from yeah. celebrities. You know, it's, it's a hypocrisy that I think yeah. that party has to figure out. Because I think a lot of, especially millennials, that were coming out of school, we're trying to work hard, we're trying to, we want to be a part of the, you know, mm -hmm. successful class of this country. Mm -hmm. There's no pride in, you know, struggling, you know, quite I frankly. I can't imagine anybody so. wouldn't like to make $335,000 That's what I'm saying. They got to fix that. <laughs> like, they got to fix that. What party is that? Yeah. By the way, can I ask you a question? Because I don't know... Um, we were talking last night, so the Koch brother, brothers are kind of libertarian? Is, is, that, is that true? Um, I think they, th you could argue that. I don't know if they're like full-blown libertarian, okay. though. I mean, I didn't know. Um, but when you look at where their money has gone, I mean, traditionally it's gone to Republican sure. candidates, but candidates who have lost. But if you actually look at where they've given it, I mean, again, Lincoln sometimes... Lincoln Center, yeah. I, I mean, know. I right. mean, the You're endowment right. for the arts, it's, it's a number of liberal Can causes. Can I tell you when I moved they're, to New York? I would say they're probably more independent, right-leaning yeah. than libertarian. That shocked me. I'm like walking past Lincoln Center yeah. for the first time, and I look up, yeah. and it's like... Oh, that's where the the, the, the Met dance. You know, it's, it's yeah. it was actually surprising to yeah. me because the media narrative wouldn't inform you of that. No. So maybe we are in kind of a new paradigm. Yeah. Maybe there's been a so. paradigm shift. And, you know, it, it, maybe Charles Koch was being completely sincere. No, but he's saying he what all he wants to look at all of these candidates independently. Because yeah. the lines are being blurred. I mean, whether you're talking about Trump and whether this argument of is he conservative, is he not? Were you talking about Hillary? Mm -hmm. Is she progressive or is she the establishment? You know, whatever. The, these lines are being blurred, Harris. And I do think moving forward, it, everything's fair game. I really do. It's interesting. I, I guess for the young voters to see, even over the weekend, um, at rallies and whatnot, people saying why they love Bernie Sanders, the oldest dude in the race. <laughs> right? right. So it yeah. is not about the age of the no, messenger. Not at all. It really isn't. No. Look at Marco Rubio. I mean, he was very young, mm -hmm. but yet, you know, that wasn't enough to satisfy no. the, the young base in well, the GOP. In, in Ted Cruz, because Ted Cruz turned 45 in December, oh, and, and Marco he's, Rubio he's, turns 45 in May. Yeah, so young. he's not... They're the same age. Like yeah. people treat them like they're a decade apart. That's they're true. Only six months apart. That's true. I don't know why. For some reason, Ted Cruz doesn't read as young. It's as so true. He does seem older, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Interesting. Uh, let's see. Clooney had mil made millions using guns in his roles. Hypocrite, according to D. John. Um, Donald Trump is going to get to twelve thirty-seven before the convention. Well, there's also that scenario. Kyle Sterling Hall. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what if he does? That's then it. What it's a wrap. Them? It's a wrap. They have hmm. to fall in line. Seriously. Can, can the GOP do anything if he gets to 1237? Like, how does it work? They can't, can they? No. Oh. I mean, They've according to their own won't. rules. And that's the thing. When you start breaking your own rules, then you got a real problem, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be sure to tell my kids that because they say oh, they, they make the, the rules, rules all the time. They're yeah. like, Mom, you're not supposed to be doing that. And I'll be like eating in front of the But you're mom, so you make the rules. So that's. Yeah, that's I try to sell that. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't always work. <laughs> um, all right. So as we head into tomorrow, we, we know Pennsylvania is going to be big. There was a lot of talk about next Tuesday's Indiana mm -hmm. and how that's make or break for Donald Trump because it's an electorate that is a little bit different than what he's seen before. I don't know. Does it, does it matter after tomorrow? I mean, am I, am I too forward looking in, in terms of that? I think California is enormous. I, I think it's a, I think it is the the holy grail of this entire thing. But Trump's got some work to do out there. 
I mean, he has not phoned um, some of the, the party leaders in the biggest county and some of the biggest Republican pockets Why do you like think Orange he hasn't? County. Just poorly uh, organized. Paul Manafort, his, his new delegate guy? There's, there fo- there's so much to do, I feel like, Harris, at this point. They're just trying to play catch up um, mm-hmm. and not get outmatched in, in the current competitions right now. They've got a little bit of time before June, before California, but California is a huge pot of delegates. And if I were on Trump's campaign right now, mm-hmm. I would, I'd, I'd be working the phones in districts like uh, in Orange County and Laguna, coastal regions that naturally fit into into Donald Trump's um, positions yes. um, instead of the areas like San Francisco and other places. But right now you see this movement on the ground. I'm hearing a lot of Democrats in California switching their registration. You see that happening in oh, Pennsylvania, too. Getting that is delegacy. So that's yeah. not just a Republican fantasy? It's not just a fantasy. It's happening. It's <laughs> this is reality. our fantasy, though. We're going to come back tomorrow. <laughs> I was quoting Charlie we'll see you then. Bye. Ah, okay. <laughs>